you have your Bibles, we're going to start in Numbers chapter 11 this morning. If you want to be turning there, Numbers chapter 11. I thought about starting out a, a couple of different ways. One was going to be to ask you, hey, who are the complainers in the room today? But I thought, I don't want to, okay, well, somebody's honest. I thought, I don't want to make everybody a bunch of liars. And then I thought, I could say, well, who's married to a complainer? And then I thought, nah. I don't want to make everybody upset with uh, everybody else in the room, and so I just want to ask you a question. What are the things that you typically complain about? Now, of course, we're not answering out loud or anything, but what are the things that you find yourself complaining about, being frustrated with so much that you talk about it, and you just go on and on and on and complain? We started this, this discussion last week about um, how we can not go back to normal because normal just was not all that great in the first place, but how we can go back to something that is better. Last week, we talked about, hey, there are legit changes that we need to make in our lives, but a lot of times we make excuses instead of changes. Today, we kind of take that a step further and say, you know, there are a lot of things in our lives that we probably have been complaining about, and if we're honest, we look at the world and we say, well, there's a lot out there that we should be complaining about. Maybe so, because maybe some complaints are justified, and they're good, uh, complaints to make because they stand up for what is right and they speak out against some kind of injustice in our world. But some complaints are not. Some are kind of worthless complaints. Whenever something just happens that I don't like or it violates an opinion that I may have and it really is kind of meaningless and it's kind of pointless and doesn't matter a whole lot and we just keep talking about it and complaining about it and complaining about it. And so what do you complain about? We all do. I think we all you know, complain about things at some point. We make complaints. Are they big deals or are they small deals? In the book of Numbers, probably a book that we don't talk about a whole lot and don't read a whole lot. It's not one that we go to and find encouragement and, and stuff for our lives. But in the book of Numbers, we're going to find a couple of stories about complainers that really should open our eyes to maybe the complaints that we make in our lives. It's normal, all right? This is kind of going to be one of those reminders that people have complained since day one in creation. We've always complained. That's normal. But if we're going to go back to something better than that, it means we're not going to really spread complaints. We're going to try to find a way to spread something better than that. If you pick up with me in Numbers chapter 11, let me give you a quick history of what's happened up until this point. Because, I, you know, Numbers is a book that it's given the name Numbers because they're numbering off people. And let's just be honest, that's not the, not the most exciting part of Scripture when you're just numbering off people and figuring out who lives where and what the power is and stuff like that. So before this, before you get to Numbers chapter 11, let me give you two or three minutes on the history. God's created the world and everything that is in it. That world quickly spiraled out of control in the first few pages of your Bible. And they are, uh, you know, over and over and again, they're just making mistake after mistake. And God says a couple of times, okay, let's restart. Let's do this over. Let's do this differently. So Noah gets a boat built and they start over kind of. And then it continues to spiral out of control. He calls Abraham and says, Abraham, we're starting over with you. I'm going to make your name great, great people, great nation, lots of land. You're going to have all the, the tools and resources you need to prosper. And so Abraham's people start to grow and grow and grow. Eventually, they find themselves in the land of Egypt, which is the most powerful place on the planet. It's also a very evil place. And so the people of God wind up down in Egypt and after a while, they start to grow and prosper, and the Pharaoh says, I don't like this, and so he puts them under slavery, and he starts to enslave all these people. They're still growing. They're still prospering. They're still becoming a great, great, numerous nation. And so Pharaoh says, we've got to make it harder on them. And so he increases their workload and doesn't give them any more resources. And so for 400 years, that's the life that they live, more than 400 years. They're enslaved. They're struggling. And eventually, they cry out to God, and they say, God, please deliver us from this persecution and from this enslavement. We want to worship you. Help us get out of this situation. So God calls Moses. Moses goes and delivers the people. The ten plagues happen. He crosses the Red Sea. God's promising them, I'm going to give you great lands. I'm going to give you great resources. You're going to have houses and wells and vineyards and all these great things that you've never had to work for. And so he calls them out of Egypt, out of enslavement, brings them through the Red Sea, and begins to give them the land of promise. It's not very far into that story where the people start to grumble and complain. And they start to talk about how bad this is and how we're just going to die out here and, and God has left us out here for dead. And over and over and over again, through the book, the latter part of the book of Exodus and the book of Numbers begins with all of these complaints. 
And if you're going to really think about it, if you could list out their blessings, that would be pretty easy. You could say, well, okay, a year or two ago, y'all were enslaved. Now you got freedom. That's great. You could be happy about that. Not so. You could say, well, a year or two ago, you had no freedom. You were you know, told what to do. You were working hard every day. And now God's blessed you with all these great things that you didn't have to work for. You could say, well, that's a great blessing. But they kind of let that slip through their minds. You could say, well, you used to have to work for your food, but now God gives you free food every morning. It's called manna. And if that's not good enough, God gives you meat for you to eat. And that's great. You got all these things that you God turns bitter water to good water so you can drink it. So if you're going to list out all the blessings they had, that'd be pretty easy. There are all kinds of them. Not to mention, they are the very chosen people of the God who created the universe. But all they do is complain and complain and complain. Here's how it starts out. If you're looking in Numbers chapter 11, verse 1, the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And that, if you just stop right there, they got all kinds of fortunes that they could be talking about, right? They could easily be talking about, hey, we got land and we've got you know, great food, and we've got a God who loves us, and we got one another, and we got freedom now. Everything's so much better than it used to be, but all they find to talk about is their misfortunes. And so they complain in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes, and when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. And so it gets really dark really quickly. All right, they complain about what God's given them. God's given them so many fortunes. They've been so fortunate to have what they've got. But all they talk about is their misfortunes. And so God says, I'm angry about this. And fire consumes parts of the camp. Have you ever been around somebody who has so much to be thankful for? I mean, this is like, we're a week or two after Christmas now. And maybe you have children at home like I do. And they've got so much, I think, to be thankful for. But then they come to you, you know, three or four days after Christmas. And they say... I'm bored, and I'm thinking, that's not the right thing to say to your parents. It's not the right thing to do here, right? You've been given so much. You have so much to be happy about and thankful for, but they're not appreciating what they've got. That's exactly what's happening in Numbers chapter 11. God has given them so many good things. He's provided so many blessings for them. He's removed so many heartaches from them, and all they do is talk about their misfortunes, and rightly so, That's one of those things that makes God angry. It's like a little spoiled child who keeps talking about how bored he is or how bored she is. That's what the people of God had become in Numbers chapter 11. Unless we, you know, point the finger at them too quickly, maybe that's who we are. That's why I wanted you to think about, what do I complain about? Are they real issues? Are they big deals? Or are they just some minor things that I just have to deal with in life? What do I complain about? Because really, what's happening here, it's very likely, is that I'm complaining about the very things that God has given us. We're complaining sometimes about the very blessings that God has provided for us. And it's not a whole lot different than Israel saying, God's brought us out of here, and and now we got to struggle, and we don't have great food. we got some food, but it's not great food. we got water to drink. We don't have anything else. And so they're complaining about the very things that God has blessed their lives with. And if we're not careful, it may be that we find ourselves in the same boat. I want you to flip a couple of pages forward and look at Numbers chapter 14 here. I also want us to figure out today that if we're going to complain, you know, that's within your rights, right? I can preach this sermon and we can read the Bible verses together and you can walk out of these doors still complaining about the same things you were complaining about when you came in here or the same things you've complained about for the last year. You can go back to normal. That is within your right if that's what you want to do. But I do want you to know that complaints are going to have consequences. Here's what happens in Numbers chapter 14. You pick up at verse 27. The Lord is speaking to Moses and Aaron, and he says, how long will this wicked congregation grumble against me? I've heard the grumblings of the people of Israel, which they grumble against me. You need to say to them, as I live, declares the Lord, what you've said in my hearing, I will do to you. You complained about it, and so God says, you're going to get what you've been talking about. He says, your dead bodies are going to fall in this wilderness, and of all your number listed in the census from 20 years old and upward who've grumbled against me, not one will come into the land that I've swore that I would make you dwell except for Caleb and for Joshua. Here's, what, here's what's happened, okay? It's real-world stuff. They have 
grumbled and complained about God, about how he's just brought him out here to die. And God says, hey, if that's, if that's what you're talking about, then that's exactly what's going to happen. If your faith is so weak and if you're so lacking in trust for God, he says, that's exactly how it's going to happen. We see that happen in our own lives, right? What's happening for them is they've got this idea about how things are. Things are terrible. It's awful. Yeah, God brought us out, but he's brought us out here to die. God took us away from Egypt, but at least we had food to eat in Egypt. God's brought us out here, and we got nothing. We're just going to die out here. And God says, if that's what you think, then that's probably, that's definitely what's going to happen. We've seen that in our lives. If I'm looking for something to go wrong, I'm going to be able to find it, right? If I'm looking for something in my life to complain about, then I'm really going to have an easy time finding something to complain about. We hear stories about teachers in school and you know they talk about the kids who are coming up in the next grade and little Tommy you know he's pretty smart but he's going to talk all the time and he's going to drive you crazy and before you know it little Tommy has driven her crazy or little Jerry over here Jerry's a really smart kid he's going to make great grades and Jerry does make great grades maybe it's because they're that kind of person but maybe it's because the teacher has in his or her mind who these kids are and they treat them like that and it helps the kid become that because what you already think a lot of times is what you're going to find. If I think my life is terrible, then chances are I'm going to find ways to prove that my life is terrible. Complaints have consequences. If that's where I am, if I'm always looking for a negative, always looking for a gripe, I'm going to find something to gripe about. If I'm always looking for something to voice my opinion on that's wrong, then I'm going to find something to do that. God says, hey, if you're out here complaining about this, if you're talking about I brought you out here just to let you die in the wilderness, then hey, you know, here's the fact. Most of y'all are going to die out here. Only a couple of you are going to make it into the great land of promise that I've given you. All right, there's one more consequence that, that I think is more real world um, for us. If you back back up a little bit into Numbers chapter 11, you're going to find Moses really uh, struggling with this. Like when you go to verse 10 of Numbers chapter 11, Moses heard the people weeping through their clans, everyone at the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord is blazing hotly, and Moses is displeased. And why wouldn't he be? I mean, Moses is the guy who's, who's gone and helped these people and brought them out and has worked with them and has, has been struggling with them. And Moses says to the Lord, Why have you dealt ill with your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing child to the land that you swore to give their, to their fathers. Where am I to get meat to give all these people? They weep before me. They say, give us meat that we can eat. I'm not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy. And so if you're going to keep doing this, kill me at once. Moses is driven to tell God, hey, take me away from this. Get me away from these people. And it's only because of their complaints. If I ask you to raise your hand and tell me, hey, who really likes to be around people who complain nonstop? Nobody is going to raise their hand. Nobody wants to be around that. We know that, and we know that because complaints have consequences. Like Moses saying, hey, I don't want to be around these folks. And Moses is a great guy, great leader, man of God, used by God for great things. But even Moses says, these people are complaining too much. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> are you angry with me, God? Have I not found favor in your sight, he says? Take me away from this. They're complaining too much. When we're complainers, now, I'm not talking about legitimate, real issues. I'm talking about just ordinary stuff. If we're complainers, we drive people away. Right? We, we push them off. Nobody wants to be around that. And so I've got to remember that complaints have real consequences in lives. If I'm trying to be negative, I'm, if I'm, I'm bent towards a negative mindset, I'm going to find some things to be negative about. And if I continue that and I keep voicing those complaints, I'm going to drive people away from me. So what do I do? Where do we go from here? Let me give you a couple of things, maybe three, as we kind of bring this to a close. It's really simple to say, but the scriptural admonition is to just stop it. Right? We're going to talk about how that has to work in a few minutes. But God says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, do all things without grumbling and complaining. Stop it. Now, they had all kinds of things to complain about, sure. If you're talking about the people who are first reading that letter, Philippians, and they turn over there and they read the scroll to, to where we find chapter 2, and he says, do all things without grumbling and complaining, that's kind of hard. 
in the first century world where they're persecuted like crazy and they're tried for their faith nonstop. And he says, just quit complaining about it. Just go do it. Quit complaining. In Ephesians 4, verse 29, that's where Paul says, let no unwholesome speech or unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is benefiting for the uplifting of those who hear you. Stop complaining and do something better. Quit spreading the complaints and start spreading a little bit of joy. Stop it. All right, I know it's not easy, but at some point, like we said um, last week, we've got to stop making excuses and start making the changes that God calls us to make in our lives. And one of those, if, I, if my normal has been complaining a lot, it's to stop doing that. He tells us a little bit about why we should quit. Also in Philippians 2, verses 14 and 15, he says, you should stop doing this so that you can shine as lights in the world. Do all things without grumbling and complaining, he says, and in verse 15, so that you can shine as lights out into a dark, dark world. Hey, look around you. When you leave this building, when you, when you go to your homes, when you go out into the, the stores, when you go to work tomorrow, when you go to school tomorrow, there's a lot of darkness. There are a lot of people who are struggling right now, probably more than they were a year ago. There are a lot of folks right now who are experiencing some dark, dark days. A lot of people are complaining about the situation that we've been dealt. But God says, if we'll stop that, and if we'll not be guilty of doing that, if we'll do all things without complaining and grumbling, then we shine as lights into the world. It's the same phrase when Jesus speaks the Sermon on the Mount, and he says that we should let our good works show so people can see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. He says that's letting your light shine. So stop complaining. Why? Because that's how you let your light shine. Today, when so many people are voicing complaints and so many people are negative, we can shine as lights into the world. He tells us why, but he also, Jesus does, tells us how. In Luke, Jesus is talking about why we say what we say and why we behave how we behave. And in Luke chapter 6, verse 45, he says, it's out of the overflow of the heart that the mouth speaks. It's out of what's inside me that's what makes words come out of my mouth. And so what we're really talking about here is not really a, a word problem at all. It's not a, a mouth problem or a, a problem of taming our tongue at all. It's figuring out, why am I so negative deep down? What is it that's causing me to, to be a complainer so much? It's not just my words. Jesus says it's out of the heart, the overflow of the heart that the mouth speaks. So probably, if I realize that I'm a complainer, and I get it, I'm, I'm not going to admit that in front of everybody in a big room. But if I'm a complainer, I've got to at some point admit that it's not a mouth problem or a word problem or a tongue problem at all. Those are outward signs of a really deep inward problem. So if I'm going to figure this out, if I'm going to do a better job of not complaining, if I'm going to, if I'm going to, go back to something better than normal, go back to, or not go back to spreading complaints, I've got to realize that, that the words coming out of my mouth are not the issue. Those are outward signs. The real problem is deep down on the inside. And so I can, I can give you the instruction, the external instruction is to stop complaining, and the why is because you can shine as lights into the world. The instruction is to let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is benefiting for those who hear you. That's the instruction, but it's not going to change until we experience a change of heart. Complaining is not so much a sign that I don't have good control of my words. It may very well be a sign that I don't have good control of my heart. It could be that I've not allowed the God who loves me cares enough about us to give his son to die for us, it could be that we've not allowed him into the, den the deeper inner parts of our lives. So I'm always looking for a negative. Even though I've got so many things to be happy and positive and joyful about, maybe you're always looking for a negative. You've got so many things to feel good about, and you've got so many things that are blessings from God, but instead of counting our blessings, we voice our complaints. And it could be like, like we just started out in the book of Numbers with these folks who have so many things that are fortunate for them and they've experienced so many good fortunes in their lives, but all they talk about are their misfortunes. It's not a, not a word problem. It's a problem in the heart. It's an outward sign of an inward problem that needs to change. Now I can make all the excuses. That's why we started out last week with make the changes, not the excuses. 
I can make all the excuses in the world. Well, I got a lot to complain about. I got a lot of problems. I'm worse off than the guy sitting beside me. I got this, I got that, they got this, they got that. Whatever, I can make all the excuses in the world. But it may be time that instead of excuses, we make changes. To not go back to normal, if complaining was normal, we go back to something better and spread joy and spread happiness and shine as lights into the world. Maybe this morning you're here and deep down in your heart, you're not right and you know it. And I'm not, I'm not breaking news to you at all because you knew that there was a heart issue. And it voices itself or it shows itself in the way that you use your words to complain. But maybe today what we need to address is the deeper heart issue. Maybe it's a heart that's plagued by guilt, by the stain of sin. And so maybe today what we need to, to happen, need to have happen, is for you, having your faith in God, to turn away from a life of sin giving into temptation, turn towards a life of following God, seeking his will, shining as a light into the world. Maybe today you take that step to be baptized into Christ, to have the guilt and the sin washed away, to begin a new kind of life cleansed by the sacrifice of Jesus, where there are no more complaints, but there's lots of beneficial talk coming out of your mouths. Maybe there are people here today who are Christians, but for some reason you spend a lot more time talking about your misfortunes than the fortunes you've got in Christ. Maybe today there's a change that needs to be made in your life to say, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to stop the complaining and the grumbling. I'm going to address the heart issue, and I'm going to shine as a light into the world. Maybe there's some things this morning we can pray about for you and for your family and whatever's happening in your life or in your world. If there's any need that you want to make known today, any way we can pray for you, any response you want to make to the call of God, please come while we stand and while we sing this song.